Hey everybody, it's Webby and welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at this car here, the 2022 Ford Fiesta ST. Now you've probably realised or probably heard that Ford have recently announced they're going to discontinue the Focus ST and the Fiesta ST here in Australia, which is actually quite sad news because this is an absolutely cracking little hot hatch. If you go to the UK or Europe, you'll see these little things everywhere. Uh, because people in Europe love their hot hatches uh, and they don't mind going for the smaller cars uh, as opposed to sort of the bigger ones. Uh, whereas here in Australia, we tend to go for the bigger stuff like Golf GTIs, Hyundai i30Ns, Civic Type Rs, that type of thing. Um, so it's really sad news that you know, Ford have decided to pull the pin on these two cars. Um, Ford have very kindly lent me this car for the week, which I booked in a couple of months ago now before they actually announced uh, that the car was getting discontinued. And I've been so excited to get my hands on this car that the news that they're discontinuing it kind of like, it, it disappointed me because it's like, I want to give a really good review of this car because I think it's fantastic. But at the same time, it's sort of tinged with a bit of sadness that no one else is going to get to experience it once these cars have left Australia. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of a sort of sad story, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, we're going to have a look around the car. I'll show you some of the features of it and then we'll take it for a, a bit of a, a drive around some twisty roads. Uh, we've got a beautiful sunny day here, as you can tell, uh, here in Melbourne. Uh, so we're gonna make the most of the good weather, take it for a drive uh, and have a bit of fun within the speed limits, of course. Um, so yeah, let's have a look around the outside to start with. Uh, then we'll have a look at the inside and then go for a bit of a drive. Right, so let's kick things off at the front of the car. Um, so we've got new styling for 2022. Uh, the front grille has been redesigned. The forward badge is now in the middle of the front grille, uh, as, opposed to, as opposed to being on here on the top of the bonnet. Uh, we've got the front lip spoiler at the bottom with the Ford Performance logo in there. Uh, and we've also got some new Matrix LED headlights, uh, which are fantastic. Under the bonnet, the engine has been updated as well. It's the same 1.5 litre, three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. Uh, that's good for 147 kilowatt. The torque has now increased to 320 newton meters, which in a car that only weighs around sort of 1200 kilos is absolutely fantastic. It's got plenty of guts, it pulls really well. Um, and even when you're on the freeway in six gear, it just goes, there's plenty of guts there. Uh, and that torque really gets you moving. Um, so yeah, engine is absolutely fantastic in this little car. Right now coming around to the side of the ST, uh, we've got some lovely uh, sort of matte grey 18 inch alloy wheels, uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres which are absolutely fantastic, I do like that particular tyre, uh, I've got them on my own car, they are fantastic. Um, I love the colour of this as well, it's called Boundless Blue. Uh, and we've also got the optional uh, black painted roof as well. You can't actually get this colour combination anymore, you can't order the car anymore really to be fair. Um, in terms of availability you might find one at a dealer if you're really lucky, um, but other than that yeah, they're pretty much sold out effectively. Um, but anyway, yeah, from the side, fantastic looking car. Um, it is quite practical, it's five doors. Uh, we don't get the three door version here in Australia. Um, other countries, like I say, the UK and Europe, they get a three door and a five door. Um, but I think there's nothing wrong with it being a five door um, because it could be seen as a, a small family car. Um, so yeah, so from that point of view, uh, it is quite practical. Uh, things like keyless entry are standard, which is nice to see. Um, they have actually deleted some of the safety stuff that used to be on this car, uh, purely because like any other manufacturer, semiconductor problems. Um, so things like blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert have been deleted. Um, you don't get the Bang & and sound system anymore. Um, so yeah, I guess for a car that's not going to be sold here anymore, Ford weren't really that bothered about losing some of the items that were on the car in the first place. Um, which is a shame because, you know, those little features just add up and, you know, make it a complete package, really. Right, so let's jump inside then, have a bit of a look around. Um, look at that interior, how cool is that? These seats, by the way, um, in the previous model, used to have Recaro seats, but it's now Ford Performance seats. Uh, I'll give you a bit of, bit of a look as we explore the inside shortly. But yeah, look how much bolster in here you've got down the sides and there by the sort of ribcage area. And they are probably the most comfortable seats I've sat in for a long time. Um, but let's climb aboard and have a bit of a look around uh, at the interior of this Fiesta. So this is the view from the driver's seat. Um, as you can see, we've got this beautiful leather wrapped steering wheel, uh, the digital display in front of the driver, which I'll turn on in a second. 
because um, it's quite warm and I want to put the air conditioning on basically. Uh, actually, let's do that first. So push button start is just to the left there. Push the buttons, bring them into life. We've got the nice digital in instrument cluster there. We've also got the Sync 3 SatNav system there, so it's nice to see the ST logo popping up again over there. Um, so yeah, steering wheel is fairly sort of standard stuff. Um, certainly if you've driven any Fords recently. Uh, cruise controls this side, buttons on this side to operate the digital display in front of you. Uh, but we've also got things like the Sport and the Mode buttons as well. Um, so these, obviously yeah, that one would turn on the Sport mode for the car. Um, and then the Mode button will actually cycle through different modes so economy sport track that type of stuff um, and it does have quite an effect on the sort of sound of the exhaust and throttle response and that type of thing um, so that's the general layout of the dash uh, the digital instrument cluster is nice and clear and easy to read it's actually similar to other models so things like the Ford Escape has got the same uh, instrument cluster as well um, some of the high-end focus models had it like the ST um, so yeah, it's very sort of familiar, it's typical sort of Ford if you like. Uh, so then when we come across from there, as I said, we've got the Sync 3 infotainment system. Um, this has been around for a few years now in, in different sort of Fords and there. They're now moving on to Sync 4. Um, so this is sort of the older version if you like, Sync 3. Um, Sync 4 gets things like wireless Apple CarPlay, which is actually quite nice. Uh, but Sync 3 is still a very, very good system. Um, and it, it's sort of, you know, carried its age quite well. Uh, just some buttons there for preset radio stations, you can adjust your speakers there. Um, coming down further, we've got things like the air conditioning controls, um, which is, which is uh, climate control, so it obviously uh, regulates the temperature for you. Um, we've then also got some quite surprising features. So if you can just see down here, we've got things like heated seats for the driver and passenger. We've got a heated front windscreen, and we've also got a heated steering wheel. Um, which is sort of surprising here in Australia because yeah, generally it doesn't get that cold to be honest, but um, yeah, we, we do get the odd cold night, so I guess that does come in handy. Um, down the bottom there, you've got a wireless charging pad. Um, now one thing to note is I've got an iPhone 13 Pro Max. If I've got my case on my phone, which I always have, just in case I drop it, the phone doesn't quite fit, because you've got this sort of raised section here. So although the phone fits, because it's got the case on it, it doesn't go flat against the wireless charger. So I actually have to take my case off of my phone for it to actually charge my phone. Um, you know, it's a first world problem and all that, but it's just something worth noting. Um, this little gadget here, uh, I've actually added, it's not a product placement or anything, they don't sponsor the video. Uh, it's a C Play to Air wireless Apple CarPlay adapter. So it just means when I get in the car, I've got cables flying around everywhere. Uh, anyway, 12 volt socket there. Uh, six speed manual, uh, which is obviously good to see. Uh, buttons down here just to turn off the traction control and also to turn off the stop start system because that's really annoying. Uh, manual handbrake, which again is good to see. We've got a little bit of storage there just in the uh, under the armrest, uh, and it's also good to see we've got a USB charging point as well uh, so you can charge a second phone. Now, looking around the cabin. Uh, so I love these seats, they're absolutely fantastic. But the actual quality of things like the door plastics, the dash, this sort of fake carbon fibre as well, it's actually a really nice place to be. Now the main competitor to this car, to me, is the Hyundai i20N. Um, and the, the interior of that isn't anywhere as nice as this Fiesta. Um, it does feel quite plasticky, whereas this, although it's plastic, feels sort of nice plastic if you like. Um, yeah, the, the materials used and just sort of the fit and finish, you know, it's pretty solid uh, all the way around the dash. So it is a definite step up from the interior of the i20N. Uh, so these seats that I mentioned earlier are absolutely fantastic. Uh, for some of my sort of body frame and size, um, I'm sort of five, six, uh, about 75 kilos. Um, this is, the seats are just perfect. They've got the right amount of sort of bolstering to keep you sort of hugged in place as you go around corners but they're not like too restrictive and make you feel uncomfortable on a longer journey. Um, they are absolutely spot on. Uh, the steering wheel is obviously adjustable for height and reach. You can get exactly where you want the steering wheel to be. So the driving position is, yeah, it's absolutely spot on. Um, 
it's just perfect for you know if you want to go out for a little blast run country lanes um, you know the seats are going to sort of hold you in nicely when you're doing a bit of sort of hard cornering um, but at the same time they're super comfortable if you're on a long journey too um, so these are absolutely superb seats um, in terms of visibility for a small car it's actually quite good um, we've got decent sized windows out the front there's a great view out the front windscreen uh, you've even got that little window at the front there uh, which helps with blind spots um, which actually aren't too bad because the pillar there um, is fairly narrow and the window goes a long way towards the front of the car so you don't really get too many blind spots at the front um, but that's my seating position in the front of the car um, let's have a look at the back and see how much space we've got left there for rear passengers Uh, now as you could probably see there, the rear door actually opens really wide. So getting in and out isn't too bad, you just have to be a little bit careful of this door sill here. Because um, you do sort of sit down into the car as opposed to just sort of stepping in. So yeah, you just have to be careful you don't whack your head on there. Um, in terms of space in the back, it's actually not too bad. Um, as I said, the driving seat's in my position. Um, so yeah, I guess it's a benefit of being short that you know, I can sit behind my own uh, sort of seating position. The seats are quite bulky. Um, it does sort of intrude a little bit into the space in the back of the car, although not so much around the knee area, it's more in the top. Um, so it does mean you can stretch your legs out. Your feet do actually fit under the driver's seat, which is really, really good, because um, it gives you plenty of space to sort of move your legs around, um, particularly handy on a longer journey, uh, so you don't get uncomfortable. We haven't got too many amenities back here though. We've got a couple of nets on the backs of the front seats. There's a little storage bin there, but we don't get things like air vents. There's no charging points, uh, which is actually quite disappointing um, because if this is like a, a sort of second family car, um, you know, you're going to want to put kids in here at some stage and they're going to want charging points. Um, so yeah, it's actually quite disappointing. There's no charging points in the back here. Um, you get very little in terms of creature comforts there's no armrest there's no cup holders in the sort of center section here you do get a little storage bin down in the sides of the doors obviously um, but other than that there's really not too much in here um, it is comfortable enough though um, so you've got the same leather and suede seats that you obviously get in the front um, and like I say there's plenty of space and there's even a decent amount of headroom too um, so it's got the basics but really that's about it all right let's go and take this for a drive then um, and oh, you don't need an excuse to go for driving this thing. It's one of those cars that you just go out for a drive. It's just, yeah, you find an excuse to go to the, sh the shops, but you take the long way. Um, yeah, you have an absolute blast in this thing. Uh, so let's go for a drive. So here we are inside the Fiesta then, uh, taking it for a drive. Um, I know you won't realise what it's like to drive, but I don't know, it's just a good excuse to go for a drive because this car is just an absolute riot. Um, it's probably one of the best handling cars on the market, period. Um, Ford have this knack of making small cars perform and handle really, really well. Um, even like a standard Fiesta, you know, don't even get an ST. A standard Fiesta will outhandle probably any other small car in its class. Um, you put the ST handling package on it, um, and yeah, there's nothing really that can touch it uh, that doesn't cost probably twice as much money. So in terms of money then, this car costs not far from $40,000 on road. Uh, so in this particular instance, we've got the metallic paint, we've got that black painted roof that we looked at earlier. Um, so yeah, just shy of $40,000 will get you uh, this on your driveway. Now if that seems a lot of money, that's because everything has gone up recently. In the last couple of years, the cost of cars has gone up ridiculous amounts. Uh, I remember making a video of a base model Toyota Yaris, and it was $28,000 for a base model. And it's like, that is ridiculous for something that is, you know, hadn't, didn't even have alloy wheels. Um, but it's like, if you want a, a small sporty car, 
that you can drive every day, but then you can go and have an absolute blast on the weekends on some twisty roads. There's nothing really that comes close. The Hyundai i20N is its natural competitor because it's in the same price bracket. Sorry, a bit of acceleration there. It's very addictive, this car. It's one of those cars where you purposely brake and slow down, and there's no traffic around, obviously, just so you can accelerate again. Just so you can feel that acceleration, that little three-cylinder hum from the engine, uh, the sporty little exhaust note. Uh, it is just an addictive little car. Um, it is such a shame that Ford aren't keeping these here in Australia. Um, but I understand they don't sell in big numbers. It is a very niche car. Um, you'd probably see you know, probably 10 i20Ns to one Fiesta ST. Not that there's many i20Ns on the road either. Um, but yeah, it, it is a shame because it is such a cracking level car. Um, like I say, I can remember you know, living back in the UK, these things were everywhere um, because people buy smaller cars there as well. Um, you know, here in Australia, people don't buy small cars. You started to see a lot more things like Golf R's, Golf GTI's these last few years um, because people are buying those instead of the V8's that we no longer have. Um, but yeah, they haven't quite gone as far as going to cars this small. Um, whenever I review a car, I always try and look at the pros and the cons. It doesn't matter what brand it is, although I work for Ford, I look at everything equally. So I always try and find the good and bad in every car. If there's something I particularly like, if there's something I don't like, um, I'll tell you all because, you know, I don't want to be as honest and um, impartial as possible. And I really struggle to find anything I don't like about this car. But on a personal level, the one thing that I really think is missing, I don't care about blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert and stuff like that. The one thing for me that's missing is the rev matching. Um, because, I don't know, have you ever tried to do heel on toe yourself? Um, I've tried it a few occasions in this car and you almost end up putting yourself through the windscreen because you're trying to balance how much pressure you put in the brake pedal to then you know, push your foot over to accelerate it to blip the throttle and try and do that perfect heel and toe manoeuvre. But I just can't do it. And it's the one thing that the i20 had um, that I drove earlier this year. And um, oh, I, just, I just love rev matching. I mean, it makes you feel like a hero when you're driving, basically. Um, I have tried sort of to find ways around it in this car, but I'm down changing, give the you know, the accelerator a bit of a stab to bring the revs back up. And it works to a point, um, but I'll, I'll never be as good as a, a rev matching system on a car. Um, so that would be probably my downside to this car. I genuinely can't think of anything else that, you know, disappoints me. Um, yeah, I mentioned earlier, I'd have to take the phone case off of my phone to put it into the wireless charging pad. That's a first world problem. Um, yeah, I accept that you know, I've got the bigger iPhone Pro Max, so it's not going to fit in every you know, wireless charging pad. And that's a real sort of minor irritation. But the rev matching, yeah, I'm definitely you know, disappointed that's not on the car. Um, and everything else is just fantastic. Uh, it's got great handling, it's got great steering. The engine is an absolute peach. Um, the amount of torque this thing has got is just ridiculous. You can be on the freeway doing about 100 k's an hour in six gear. If you put it in sport mode so you get a bit more throttle response and you've got that full fat power, literally as you put your foot on the throttle it just goes. Um, and you're almost sort of thinking, oh yeah, I've got to change gear, I'm not in, fifth, I'm not in sixth gear. But you are, you're in top gear and it just pulls away. Um, you know, 320 new meters of torque in a car that weighs, like I say, around 1,200 kilos. Um, yeah, it's, it's just fantastic. And in terms of the boring stuff, um, the car comes with a five-year warranty, as do all other Fords. 
you got cap price servicing for the first four services, uh, which are every 12 months or 15,000 Ks. Uh, cap to 329 per service, so it takes you up to, like I say, four years or 60,000, whichever comes first. You get roadside assistance, uh, the normal sort of stuff that you get with every Ford. Uh, in terms of running costs for fuel, uh, the official figure is 6.3, is a 47 litre tank. Um, if you manage to get anywhere close to 6.3, um, you're going to get sort of six or 700 k's out of a tank. Um, I'm currently sat on 6.5, which is quite amazing really. Um, I have done a fair bit of freeway in that, but then I've also done quite a lot of town driving as well. Because my journey to work, although it's on a dual carriageway, it's all stop start, it's all going through, you know, sort of little towns to get to work. Um, and lots of traffic lights and school traffic and that sort of thing. Um, and then you get Sunday afternoons like this where you find a twisty road and you test out how much grip those Michelin tyres have got. You also have to show quite a lot of self-restraint because you can find yourself going over the speed limit fairly quickly. Um, it's fairly refined in here, it's not the quietest car I've ever driven, um, but it's also a long way from being, you know, what you class as noisy, um, and obviously that depends on road surface too. Um, but yeah, so I've been averaging 6.5, which I think is pretty good. Um, and that's over, so I've done just over 500 k's in the week. Um, so averaging 6.5, I think that's pretty reasonable. I really do. Um, because it's one of those cars that just begs you to sort of go out and thrash it. Um, and just have an absolute blast in it. So the fact that it's only 6.5 is, is quite remarkable. Um, I'll put that down to, you know, spending a, a little bit of time on the freeway. But if you spent all your time, if you lived out in the countryside with some great twisty roads, your fuel consumption would be considerably higher. Uh, I don't mind would because you'd just be out there every weekend, um, yeah, just having an absolute blast. So that's the end of the video. Uh, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and also hit that notification bell because that will tell you every time a new car review goes live. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments about the Fiesta ST, uh, leave them in the comment section below for me. Uh, and that just leaves me to say thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.